Greetings! I am Herbert Erfurter, and today I am going to build and paint this Flames of War Sturmovik. It's good strong plan for Soviet army. There are so few parts in this box that it barely counts as a kit. Not that this is a bad thing. You get the resin plane, metal propeller hub and rockets, clear plastic flight stand, decals, some magnets, and an aircraft die. Not bad at all. The resin casting did have a few kind of ugly flaws, though they're nothing too serious. On the whole, the model looks pretty nice and shouldn't be too hard to clean up. I just used a file to do a rough clean up and that turned out neat enough for me. It's not perfect and I could have spent more time using green stuff getting everything all nice and neat, but I didn't really feel like it. Soviet planes should probably be a little rough looking anyway. The next thing I did was to file down the front of the fuselage and test fit the propeller hub. I then glued it in place, being careful not to leave huge gaps. Well, the glue on that sets I glued on the rockets. These are optional and I think I got lucky in the fact that these didn't need any cleanup. I then cleaned up the propeller hub. Gluing this tiny piece on before filing it makes it a lot easier to handle. And it's built. It looks pretty good, I think. Now to build the flight stand. I must admit to being a bit surprised at the quality of this thing. Compared to those found on Games Workshop models, this is simply amazing. Clip out all the parts and glue the magnet into the top piece. As this is my first Flames of War plane, I'm not really worried about matching the magnet's polarity with any other models. I just make sure that the polarity is correct for this model when I glue the magnet inside the fuselage. Next I glue the stalk onto the base of the stand, the magnet holder on top of the stalk, and then you've got yourself one flight stand. I may at some stage decorate the base rather than leave it transparent, but not right now. This thing is nice and steady, and the plane can't be snapped off of its stand. Fantastic! To avoid getting paint on the clear stand, I glued a magnet to a small piece of dowel to use as a painting stand. This is much better than holding it with my fingers. Now, it is time to paint. As always, priming is first. I use Vallejo Black Primer. And then I spray the underside of the fuselage Vallejo Model Color Sky Grey, thinned appropriately for airbrush use. And then I mask that off in order to spray the upper areas. I've decided to try the Humbrol Mask Oil again. I just sort of glopped it onto the main areas first, and then tried to paint it onto the areas where the two colours will meet as neatly as possible, which proved to be a little more difficult than I had initially thought. Masking tape probably would have been smarter. I decided to use Vallejo's Luftwaffe Camouflage Green for my base coat. This is one that came in one of the Flames of War branded paint sets. There's probably a regular Vallejo equivalent. I did the camo pattern using Flat Earth, also from one of the Flames of War branded sets. I avoided spraying the brown on the canopy to make it a little easier to correct mistakes later when painting the windows. I had to do a couple of coats of this to make it look good, but I'm happy with the results. Time to remove the masking. I have to admit that this was quite satisfying. Also note the blue tack that I had to use to get the model to stop wobbling around. The mask all worked pretty well, though some of the lines were a bit janky. That's really more of a problem with the user than the product. It isn't particularly a big problem though. I used a very fine brush to touch up the lines by hand. It isn't perfectly straight, but I don't imagine perfect paint jobs were a priority for the real thing. Now to paint some details. I carefully painted the wheels with Vallejo model color black grey, and then I used the black surface primer to paint the rockets. Then I added a spot of model color gold and yellow to the tip of each rocket. I have no idea if this is realistic or not, I just thought it would look cool. And then onto the exhaust. I painted this with model colour chocolate brown, and then I dry brushed it with amarantha red, so it looks a little bit rusty. Obviously care must be taken here to only paint the exhaust. Finally, the propeller hub is painted with carmine red. Now for the decals. I didn't bother videoing myself applying a layer of gloss varnish prior to this. I wasn't really happy with the decals that came with this model. They do look good, but they seemed a bit thick. They didn't seem to want to come free of the backing sheet no matter how long they soaked, and they were difficult to manoeuvre around the model. They didn't seem to shrink into the gaps either, which they should have as I used the Humbrol decal set. Perhaps these decals simply work better with water, I'm not sure. I omitted the arrow decal that goes along the fuselage because of how annoying I thought it would be to apply. I hope the decals with the German and British planes I have are more cooperative. Despite the difficulties though, I think the result was good. Next I started some weathering. 
First I applied army paint a dark tone to the exhaust pipes, dragging it back along the fuselage. And then I added some dark tone to the recessed lines. They're actually pretty deep and didn't get completely filled by the green and brown layers, but doing this will make them stand out a little bit more. Be sure to go over the decals, which I've pressed into the lines very carefully with a blunt sculpting tool. It makes them look painted on. If you make a mess, just wipe off the excess with a finger or a paper towel. Don't forget the panel lines on the underside of the plane. At this stage I also added some dark tone to the wheels and used it to make some dark marks behind the rockets. This next step I wasn't entirely sure that I would like, but I took the risk. I applied a chipping effect using spongy foam, but I used a metallic paint. Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal in this case. I do this all the time on tanks, but not with metallics. I feel doing so looks bad unless the damage is meant to be fresh, because steel dulls over time. I may be wrong, but I believe fighter planes are made of some kind of aluminium, so it would make sense that they'd be a little shiny under the bits of rubbed off paint. I do like the look better than I thought I would. My next step was to add streaks of army paint to strong tone, mixed roughly one part strong tone and one part water. I slop it along the leading edges and then streak it backwards along the top and bottom of the plane. I do a few layers of this so it makes a more natural looking discoloration. After this I take a very fine brush and place a few streaks with undiluted dark tone in spots that seemed logical to me. Time for windows. I very very carefully painted the windows with black primer, but any other black should be fine as well. Then over the top of this I did a couple of layers of Vallejo Model Air Blue, creating a gradient from dark at the bottom of the window getting lighter towards the top. This paint is quite thin so I didn't need any additional thinning for this purpose. The final layer is a very fine line of thinned model colour royal blue along the very top of the windows. This effect is kind of subtle and I think I could do it better, but I'm happy with the result I got. With this sort of thing it's best to take your time. That way you minimise mistakes, which means less time spent touching up the green areas. I didn't bother videoing myself fixing the green around the canopy windows or applying the matte varnish, and I'm still debating whether or not I want to add some gloss varnish to the windows, but overall I'm pretty pleased with this model. The details are nice, it was fun and took almost no time to build. It was pretty quick and easy to paint as well. I quite like the flight stand, it should make the model much more practical to transport. Imperfect casting and annoying decals aside, if you need a good strong plane for your Soviet forces, you could do worse than this Sturmovik. Kill German tank, no problem! Hopefully I can wield the Sturmovik more effectively in my games of Flames of War than I do in War Thunder. I hope this video has been helpful or has maybe inspired you to start your own mighty Soviet Air Force. As usual, click subscribe or follow me on the Twitter if you feel so inclined. Thanks for watching. Farewell.